Rome, you want to get get yeah. going? Let's start. Yeah. Um, hello, everybody. Welcome to the Library of Things collab info session. This info session is about our new program, Shareable Zoom program. Solidarity Works, um, of course, is designed by Shareable for the Solidarity Economy and Friends, which is which are you all. Um, so we're very happy that you all carved out the time for us today. Uh, hopefully, we don't take up too much of your time that you carved out. But thank you all for joining us. Um, we're gonna, so for our agenda for the day is we're gonna start off with the introduction to Shareable. Some of you may know who we are. Some of you may be like, I have no clue, but I know what a library of things is, of course. Um, and that's what brings me here. Some of you may, we all have different, you know, um, engagements with Shareable. So we wanna let you all know who we are. Um, and then we're gonna talk a little bit about our library of things accelerator, um, essentially, our resource hub as well, um, what that'll look like. We're gonna talk a little bit about community involvement and then we're gonna send out a survey. So all of these things will connect in a moment, um, but that is essentially what the info session or the agenda looks, out, looks like for today. Um, so the goal of this session is to turn chaos into clarity. Uh -huh. So you may see opportunities for a deeper conversation with members of our team. We are here for any questions you have during and after our time together. Um, really don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Um, I am Rome Jasmine. I am the education director for Shareable. We have uh, Tom Llewellyn, who I'm sure can introduce himself. <laughs> Tom is the interim executive director and we have Bobby Jones, the development director um, for Shareable. Cool. Well, I'll just jump in and talk a little bit about Shareable. Um, so while I'm while I'm talking, we've got a fun activity uh, and encourage everyone to choose an emoji uh, that best represents kind of how well you know or your experience with Shareable. If you've worked with us or followed us in the past, drop those, put those emojis up on your on your profiles there at the bottom um, under reactions. And you can actually choose whatever emojis you want, but those are just uh, some selections. So Shareable has been around for about 13 years. Um, we are best known for our uh, publishing. We've published over 4,500 articles about the ways that people are sharing resources around the world, uh, th over 300 how-to guides, uh, but we've also been involved in the supporting of starting new um, community infrastructure, sharing initiatives, tool libraries. I'm the co-founder of the Asheville Tool Library uh, before I came to Shareable and, or I guess during as well. And um, and so, yeah, so we've been doing that kind of um, kind of on the ground support for, for community infrastructure for a very long time, in addition to policy work uh, and other consulting around the sharing space. Uh, so, what we are kind of primary programs we've been we are doing right now is we have a lecture an open lecture series uh, mm -hmm. focused on um, uplifting diverse voices in urban planning with Tufts University called Cities at Tufts. We have the final lecture of our spring semester tomorrow. Uh, we also lead communications for the Rural Power Coalition, which is supporting the conversion of the rural electric cooperatives that are uh, that have 42 million member owners across the United States to um, transition to renewable energy. And we've had some pretty big success recently on that front. Uh, and then we also have our ongoing uh, podcast uh, series, The Response, which focuses on the ways that communities are building collective resilience in the wake of disasters. Um, and really, you know, those all those different pieces kind of fit to support our mission, which is to empower communities to share for a more resilient, equitable, and joyful world. And that joy really comes into um, as many aspects of our work as possible, and is the one of our key um, values as an organization. In addition to liberation, collaboration, solidarity, and empowerment. And so this new program, which Rome is going to be taking the lead on explaining uh, Solidarity Works, is kind of the next evolution, um, which kind of pulls together a whole lot of the things that we've been doing over the last 13 years into a single program. Pass it back to you, Rome. 
Got it. Thank you for that, Tom. Um, so essentially Saturday Works is a new program designed by Shareable to empower local communities to kind of creating um, different types of social infrastructure through collective education and collective action. Um, really this social infrastructure will um, circulate around uh, the Solidarity Economy Initiative. Um, so this program intends to provide systemically marginalized communities with the necessary, necessary tools and resources to cultivate more social um, infrastructures rooted in solidarity, autonomy, and joy, which is really important. Um, uh, so each collab, each kind of step under or initiative under um, solidarity works that we create in the future, it will include a 12 to 18 month deep dive into a people powered um, social infrastructure. Um, and this can go into different types of in infrastructures. Um, our first pilot will be the library of things um, infrastructure, um, kind of building it up. So this is kind of strengthening the field, you know, um, celebrating what uh, library of things have already done and just creating more and more resources for folks who I want to be involved in library things, but I really don't know where to start. Um, and also for folks who are already involved, but would like to connect and network with other library of things and get different pieces of advice on what other library of things are doing um, and kind of deepen their practice a little bit. So um, this is what we have set up so far. You all see we, we want to have live webinars. Um, we'll create a toolbox and curriculum um, really full of educational and tutorial materials for people who are wanting to be a part of the Library of Things um, initiative and people who are already existing in the Library of Things initiative. We will also have capacity building grants accessible um, and it will also uh, will develop a mentorship and support community um, for people at different levels of um, creating a Library of Things. Let's see. Also, if at any point I'm talking too fast, just let me know. It's just my accent. <laughs> so don't hesitate to tell me, like, Rome, run that back one more time. Uh, <laughs> do not hesitate at all. All right. Oh, no, no, no. Skip one. Okay. So why the collab? Why are we doing this thing? Um, from climate disaster to entrenched economic stability to the erosion of um, democracy, we all are feeling um, the crisis that's going on within our social worlds um, from different angles, right? Um, so the, the reason why we're doing this collab is that we are wanting to create a kind of like a pipeline transition into a more just and sustainable economy, which requires cooperative um, solutions and collective education, right? It requires all of us kind of working together. Um, unfortunately, most communities across the US um, often lack the social infrastructure and often lack the, the resource and support and mentorship um, to create these cooperative solutions. So Solidarity Works will train and empower people to launch projects that build solidarity within their communities. Um, and this looks like um, convening or creating a peer support network of organizers. This also looks like developing an open source toolkit um, to launch new types of social infrastructure. This also looks like directly supporting new social infrastructure in marginalized communities. Um, so we believe that a more just and sustainable economy is only possible when we empower local communities to build their own um, cooperative solutions. So this is really just bridging um, whatever gap that we see uh, between access, between resources, um, and all those different really pivotal and very crucial um, elements to um, creating your own project or your own social infrastructure in your community. Um, so Library of Things Accelerator. What we will be doing um, and what, what is really um, pivotal to the pilot project that we're having is creating this access accelerator, which is pretty much making Library of Things something that is very accessible to folks who may be like, I heard of this thing, 
but I don't know where to start. I don't know who, I don't have any kind of connections with Library of Things communities. I don't know how, I don't, I have no clue where to start. Or there may be people who are kind of starting and just needing some kind of, um, like an olive branch to kind of help them along the way. So what this will look like is, will be creating that Library of Things toolbox, which will come with different templates. This will come with different, um, educational materials, this could come with tutorials as well, just kind of outlining uh, different processes to starting a library of things and also maintaining a library of things. Um, this will also come along with free and open access curriculum, um, which could, which will mean like trainings, this can also mean like um, different recordings from webinars that we have together. This will all really encompass like expert advice, uh, which is where the community really comes into play right here at this moment. Um, this will also look like creating a community resource hub. Um, so this is for all existing library of things to kind of um, get that access to what other library of things may be doing, um, different processes that they may already have, different ways of um, navigating different uh, obstacles or barriers. Um, and just creatively kind of speaking to one another and saying, hey, this is how we dealt with this issue, or hey, this is how we kind of um, have learned to navigate this different issue, right? And this will also look like capacity building grants. So as you can see, you can kind of take a look at the, the lineup we have of what that community resource support will look like um, and creating that digital toolbox will create, you know, um, different course content, templates, tutorial material for LOT sustainability, which is really um, at, at the core of what we wanna do. We wanna make sure that Library of Things can be sustainable um, for all who want to um, cultivate or create and build up their own Library of Things. The free and open access curriculum, this curriculum will provide resources on starting and maintaining the LOT. So that just goes right into um, making sure that LOTs are really accessible. Community Resource Hub, this will look like all of us speaking with one another and sharing what we have, you know, um, hearing what kind of trepidations or obstacles another library of things is dealing with is saying, hey, oh my goodness, we dealt with that and this is what we did. Um, that is really, really pivotal to um, creating a community and also hitting on that accessibility point. Um, capacity building grants. This program will provide uh, seed funding for Library of Things to stick around for the long haul. So that's really um, another big part of the accessibility and the sustainability aspect of this program. Yeah, and one thing just about the... Okay. Um, one of the things just that we are... Um, also, one thing to note is that we're not trying to replace the Google group. The Google group is awesome. And, but one of the kind of pain points of the Google group is that as I'm sure everybody on here noticed every single time there's somebody that's new comes on, the same questions get asked over and over about insurance and about different stuff. And so one of the ideas is to kind of bring in the collective knowledge and, um, be able to have it in a more accessible place uh, and that groups are able to get a, get a jump start, have, have a repository of information they can go to and then ask, you know, clarifying questions on top of the resources that are available instead of starting uh, basically from scratch. Yep. So it's just pretty much um, upping that, that um, point of access and making sure that all of these bits of information in one place for everybody to access to it. Uh, the deep dive aspect of this, which is one of my favorite aspects. Um, I'm really into <laughs> studying a lot and doing a lot of research and study and just asking a lot of different questions. So that is what this is. The deep dive is really um, to utilize an integrative research method um, that will be used to provide resources for library of things in development and existing. So. This will look like, um, from this, we'll be able to form a library of things advisory team. Um, we'll also 
this will really contribute to the accelerator portion of the, the program. And this will also create um, the resource hub. So it's really an investigative and archival study into um, the library of things, social infrastructure. Um, this will take 12 to 18 months. Um, and from this, we'll be able to create different tutorials, we'll be able to create different resource accesses, we'll be able to create um, different ways that we can excel um, library of things and bring it to different communities and just kind of see what are the points of pain, what are some of the prickly points that library of things are dealing with and how can we be of help, how can we kind of be of service, how can we kind of create different um, resources for access. Um, and this, just doing the study, the study part of it is really um, crucial. So a part of that study is um, the, this, this very um, big survey that we've been really, really working on. Um, and this is something that we'll be handing out during this session in just a few. Um, but the reason why we want you all to kind of be involved with this is so that we can really connect a lot of the information that you all and insights that you all share with us to other um, library things so that everyone can kind of know, you know, um, how many um, different library of things are, you know, how many two libraries there are existing, how many are kind of free form library of things that are kind of existing um, and where are they and just kind of creating that resource um, hub for everyone to kind of see how library of things are navigating different barriers, how they're existing, what kind of, what their insurance policies, like what their, just the ins and outs, um, just so that it creates uh, different more avenues for access and more avenues for resources and more avenues for um, creativity and brainstorming, um, problem solving. So having as many of us practicing reciprocal care together makes the whole engine run, right? It really does. This is about sharing beyond shareable. This is about, it's not necessarily just sharing with shareable, but this is also really creating just a, a large network, large beehive kind of, of all of this, um, just saying, you know, this is what my library of things is doing. This is where we have, this is how we've kind of survived. This is how we've, we have sustainable um, funding. This is how we, this is what we're struggling with. And then from that, um, we can really create uh, more and more resources that just is for the betterment of this, this um, infrastructure that we all kind of love and cherish. Any questions on that before I go ahead? Okay, so uh, a growing number of our partners so far um, includes the Center for Biological Diversity. We have the South King Tool Library um, Incubator Program, and we also have My Turn. Um, and so we would love to um, create more and more and more partnerships from here from what we have already. And that is something that we all kind of want to open the doors to and invite you all into doing today. So for the advisory team, the advisory team will um, pretty much advise on the development of the curriculum and toolbox. They'll provide directional mentorship to the organizing team. Um, they'll provide expert support for training. Um, this is an open invitation for all Library of Things practitioners who have pretty much expert history in the lending library field, um, a passion for sharing educational resources, and pretty much the will to build uh, connection across diverse communities. So the advisory team will assist in a mapping of our program and operate as a steering committee uh, while providing directional and anecdotes and network support for our collective journey. Um, so you all will pretty much, if you are wanting, you're like, I want to come in on an advisory level, you'll pretty much just be, um, we'll be meeting pretty um, consistently. I think we've talked about possibly meeting like once a month um analyzing survey data talking about creatively like brainstorming uh, different possibilities of access and different ways to create uh, resources that could be shared widely 
and there will also be just to jump in real quick there'll be mm -hmm. opportunities for folks to participate and be part of the advisory team whether you can make meetings or not um and as part of the survey which we'll be going over in a moment one of the things we ask is uh for groups that are on the survey is if you're willing to share you know all of your um you know member documents uh you know any any of like the the back end resources that are running your library of things and also you know are there things that you feel like you're really accelerating you know accelerating at like uh excelling at is the word i was looking for um like you know is there like an amazing volunteer program that you've cultivated or um the way that you have built your um your item maintenance team um works really well or you know something that you feel like you've kind of figured out um that you think that others could could benefit that maybe haven't figured out quite the way the same thing like those are the types of things that we're going to be asking the community to to kind of share their experience so we can pull those together in the in the toolbox of resources yeah um and another part of this is um it will also kind of feed into the library of things fellowship so you'll also be able to um, help us along the way with that um, this will so the library of things fellowship which is a part of the solidarity works collab um, fellows will receive a monthly stipend fellows will receive seed funding fellows will receive mentorship and a personalized support system and that support system looks like um, the library of things advisory team and library of things network at large um, so this year-long fellowship will provide the necessary funding and support for marginalized communities to cultivate more libraries of things locally. So this just really gives um, folks who are part of the advisory team in any capacity or folks who are part of the library of things network an opportunity to uh, mentor um, new and upcoming library of things and potential library of things in different uh, marginalized communities. Um, and so this is really like the, I would say, little bit of the heart of the the pilot project as well um, it is as two sides it's field strengthening the field and also um, being able to provide uh, mentorship and um, uh, just a really wide support system for our fellows who are learning about library right things and bringing it to their community so that's really exciting and was there was a question that came in the chat around okay. is this open to you know international us the the whole program is is open to international participants, but the uh, because of some funding constraints, the the paid fellowships are um, currently only available for for folks living in the U.S. Here we are. So next up is our survey. Um, and hopefully, either Tom or Bobby. Can yeah, why, why, don't, why don't I just jump in? So. Yeah. Um, so we've created a pretty comprehensive survey. Um, it's a little long, uh, but the idea really is to be able to create kind of uh, a benchmark for where library, what kind of where the state of the, basically it's like a state of the movement, um, you know, where the, where libraries of things are right now, um, you know, how many members you have? How many items are 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 being um, lended out? You know, how many people are actually you? You know, how many items are lended out per month? Like, you know, some of the granular stuff. Um, also, some of the like, how many volunteers? What's your staff? Um, and then there's you know, democrat. You know, questions around demographics. Like, who is your membership? You know, is your membership representative of your community as a whole? Is your organization representative of the community? Um, you know, are there things that you, as I mentioned earlier, that you are excelling at doing very well? Um, we hope that through this survey that we will be able to kind of get the snapshot of where libraries of things are at now and figure out what those pain points are, um, what those opportunities for growth and support are, and um, be able to work that into this collab. We're planning on sharing all the survey data. We'll we'll share all the aggregated data um, with everybody. Um, we're going to put out a public report. Um, everybody that fills out the survey will get that report first. Um, and this could be the kind of thing that these same questions get asked on an annual or you know every other year basis, um, like there and just kind of be like an industry um, 
uh, kind of an opportunity to see as the industry moves forward, as I was, messaging, uh, as I was mentioning earlier. So that's kind of how we've designed it. And as the more that we thought about it, the longer that it got. <laughs> so it's currently 55 questions, um, but the vast majority of them are multiple choice. Um, it should take you no longer than 30 minutes, but probably at least 15 to be able to get through. And um, you know, really want to um, make sure that it's clear that we're asking for folks to share the information that they know, you know, to the best of their knowledge. So if there's stuff around demographic questions that you really don't know for sure, but your general feeling is, this is who I'm seeing showing up to check stuff out or, um, or that, like, go ahead and just go with what your best judgment is. Um, you know, if there are questions that you really don't know, um, you can skip those. Uh, but the more answers, the, the better. And, and as I mentioned, we'll be then taking that data and looking at a couple different verticals and if A, then B, if B, then C, um, and putting together a bit of a report um, to be able to get a better snapshot of where things are at. So that's kind of the, the idea behind the survey. Uh, and then, you know, really this project as a whole is only gonna be as strong and as useful as the community that comes to support it. And, um, we, um, we're going to do our best to facilitate. We've raised a certain amount of money to be able to dedicate some staff time to it. We have not raised all the money that we know we're going to need to be able to um, make this whole thing as good as it could be. Uh, and so we're st definitely still looking for, for other partners to join, for suggestions around potential funders to reach out to. Um, we are fortunate to have a funder that is offering us uh, offering to match uh, all the money we raise up to a certain point. Um, and so like on a dollar for dollar match. So even small contributions can essentially be doubled by this foundation. Um, so if there are local partnerships in your communities or, you know, community foundations. Um, and then the other thing is that, you know, we are looking for more fellows to join this program as well. And so if there is some neighboring city or an expansion into a different part of the city that you're in um, that has been really wanting to get going but needed extra support, um, we're also potentially a resource for that. And so that's kind of where where we're at. Anybody have any questions around the the survey? And yes, I saw that one. Ideally, yes, we get one answer per um, per library. Uh, but if Multiple people, multiple people fill it out. We will be able to sort for that. Tom, I wanted to jump in real quick um, to clarify the ask for today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, as always, there's like a couple of different ones. The first one is, please fill out the survey. Um, you know, it may be long. It may take 15 minutes out of your day, but also. You know, that report is something that we'll be able to use and that when we share it, you will hopefully be able to use um, to make the case for supporting your library in the future. You know, having this big, um, having good data from libraries across the country can only help our case. as And international. Forward. Yeah. Um, so number one, fill out the survey. Number two, please share the survey. Um, three, if you are interested in being on the advisory team, reach out, let Rome know. Um, that's, we're forming it right now and we really need your input to make this successful. Um, and then the last one, if you, know, you want to be involved, but the advisory team may not be a good fit for you, you don't have the time, um, please, you know, if you're willing to share information, if you're willing to um, provide coaching, be a mentor, host a session once we get into the educational section, um, let us know as well, because we that's what we really need to make this possible is this community of people who are the experts and know um, what needs to be shared. So. And just the... Um... 
I was starting to write an answer, but I'll just say it out loud to Maximilian. Um, so the capacity building grants that we're talking about, those are going to most likely be available next year. Um, they're built on the project. Um, and the idea is basically for um, participants in this one year kind of educational program. So it'll be like monthly webinars. You won't have to join all of them. There's the things that would make sense for you to be able to kind of up grading, upskilling your, your libraries of things. Um, for groups that want to take something, um, you know, want to improve their um, community engagement or add in an extra class structure or some kind of um, addition to their library of things, we would then have a pool of money that folks can get kind of matching grants from to be able to make that happen in their communities. And those would not be, um, those would be open to uh, all participants, not just the, the fellows. And so that's where we'd be able to dispel some funding um, across the United States and also uh, most likely internationally as well. Um, did I miss out on this or not, Rome? Did you actually say when we were planning on starting the, the lecture conference? series? Or the lecture series? Yeah. No, that will be no. this summer. So that'd be the, in, at the end of the summer. So uh, of the beginning summer. of the fall. So um, the kind of one year lecture series is we're planning to start that in September. And so one of the things that we'll be doing is, um, so the survey is gonna run for a month um, over, the, over the summer uh, for those of us in the Northern hemisphere we will be um, developing that toolbox of resources. And then that toolbox will get launched at the beginning of the, of the fall for us again in the Northern Hemisphere, um, along with this lecture series. And then the idea is that the resources will be tested over the course of the next year. So people are gonna look at uh, implementing them in their communities, the fellows that are starting new libraries of things and, and others that are participating in the program starting new libraries of things will be using that. We'll be testing the assumptions that are built into those resources, what things are easily replicable, what things take a little bit more um, intention to be able to adapt. Um, at the end of that year, we will then be doing a full review and update of that toolbox of resources so they are as um, replicable as possible. And then that might be something that would need to be reviewed every once in a while and added to, but the idea is that it would become an open source resource uh, for that will move forward. And you know, we're building off of, um, again, all the work that's been done before, picking up the, the baton from, um, uh, from Gene and others who, created the share starter, um, which is now, I think was that seven, eight years ago, nine years ago. Um, and the idea is to hopefully um, kind of just, again, strengthen the field as a whole, as we move forward together. Tom, we've got a couple of questions about yeah. capacity building grants. Do you want to talk a little bit about those really quickly? Yeah. So I, I answered that in the first question, the, how much those grants are actually going to be, um, it's too early in the process for, for us to be able to say it might be a thousand or two thousand dollars, something like that, which then are available as matches. Um, if we're we are still actively fundraising for this program, and in if some of the larger fund pools of funding that we're going after come through, those that that pool of matching grants would be larger. Uh, and then, so we did put the survey in the in the chat. Uh, one thing that we're gonna we're gonna send it out on the Google listserv as well, um, and you know if there's it would definitely be helpful if you if you fill it out and you and you think that it's going to be a a uh, useful tool that we are that we're working to create, um, it would be helpful for folks to jump in on the um, on the thread on the on the Google and and encourage others to take it as well um, build a little bit of a of a network effect um, and then we're also going to be sharing the slides coming out of this presentation which I'm putting a link to in the chat right now as well
Are there any other questions before we're closing out? So some of our next step um, action items uh, in this project is to build an advisory team, um, start to really create that toolbox uh, from, from all of the information that we get from the surveys as well, uh, build a curriculum, brainstorm creative solutions to um, barriers of access and cultivate deeper connections with our uh, target communities. Um, essentially what you can do is you can always, if you're wanting to um, connect with us on any different um, issues, I know that Bobby really does work with um, anything regarding funding. Um, you can also contact me um, regarding any kind of programming, uh, any kind of questions regarding, um, you know, if you need clar clarifications on a question on the survey, if you're needing some kind of clarification on anything that was uh, provided throughout this entire information session, you can always just uh, reach out to me, uh, Rome Jasmine and Rome at shareable.net. Uh, you'll see my email at the end. And a lot of you, or many of you, some of you may already know Tom, <laughs> our interim executive director, but you can also contact Tom for any similar questions as well. Um, I want to say, we kind of say our goodbyes here. <laughs> we kind of close out the presentation here. We're ending off with a little nice quote with Bell Hooks. Uh, Love is a combination of care, commitment, knowledge, responsibility, respect, and trust. And I think that this quote really just brings us closer to that idea of reciprocal care, um, mutual care, and really just learning how to invest in one another um, and all of our you know, collective mission to make library of things really um, accessible um, and pivotal in different communities. Thank you all for joining us. Yeah, so I'm, I'm wondering where folks are coming from. Yeah. Um, one, what uh, libraries of things and cities and info and you know if, if you want to put it in the chat you know please do and otherwise if you want to unmute yourself and just introduce yourself we've got um a little bit of time um to be able to do that and just be interesting to see who show who's who's showing up today hi i'll speak if that's yeah. okay yeah um hi i'm erica um, Schilling. I'm from Ilkley in West Yorkshire and we're, we've got a really new library of things that has been open for, I think about, this is our third week, um, but we've kind of, um, the idea has been sort of growing for about three years in a small group, um, got some funding to do it, to set it up and run it um, for sort of two or three years um with one employee and um the rest kind of a voluntary group of people um we um we've got about i think 300 items already um so we're a fairly keen group um i trained myself as a pat tester um so that i could um do all that side of it um we've got somebody else doing that as well um we've got quite a lot of members already, I think, in the first three weeks, maybe about 300. Um, so we've been doing lots of running about telling people about it. Um, but yeah, um, and I'm currently just kind of writing um, procedures. So I've got a background sort of in academia and developing tools. So I haven't done a lot in kind of time-wise for the library of thing, but I'm just developing some guides and things, step-by-step uh, -step things uh, for this library that I'd be very, very happy to share. Um, so although I'm quite new, um, I would quite like to be involved in yeah. kind of um, stuff. Yeah, so that's me. Thank you. Seeing some good things in the chat. Um, I'll introduce myself. I'm Jason Nauman. I'm uh, in Portland, Oregon. I work with the Green Lens Two Library and looking to um, get another one started over here in the Gresham area. Uh, right now, we've had a really active board, which has been great. We've been able to get a lot of um, systems documents put together. It's something I'd love to contribute and get over yeah. to you guys. Um, yeah. Trying to work with our metro department a lot more to build out our 
uh, sustainable salvaging and, and repair components as well. Um, I'm getting connected with a lot of the different repair and reuse communities, um, trying to make some cohesion. So, nice. and we just started in on doing workshops this year as well. As well, so uh, that's something that I'm kind of taking the lead role on. So hopefully we can connect on that. Yeah, are you uh, tied into Repair PDX? Yeah, I I've, I know Lauren and I've worked with yep. them a little bit. They help us find the teachers for our workshops, which is oh, a great nice. connection. So yeah, cool. I uh, I put my info in the chat there, but. Um, my name is Amanda Miller and I'm with the South King Tool Library and um, yeah, thank you guys for including us as partners and I was just thrilled to hear um, this idea because we we landed on something similar and just completed a six months or maybe nine months accelerator program with Next Cycle Washington to work on the tool library incubator program so um, this is really exciting to carry on that work. Um, with sort of the next steps and that centering on equitable access and waste reduction. So um, I do too many things maybe, <laughs> uh, but we do a lot of different programs and trying to spread the word, try to create more access and more tool libraries or libraries of anything. I look at a lot of things as tools. So yeah, this is exciting. Good to meet you all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ellen Stewart, and I'm with the New River Valley Tool Bank in Blacksburg, Christiansburg, Virginia. Um, we This tool bank is not quite open. We were about to open just before COVID hit, and we kind of lost our momentum and just closed up shop for a while and kind of are reinventing it now. We had a lot of the infrastructure in place, thank goodness. And we're partnering, partnering with our local Habitat for Humanity Restore mm -hmm. that has offered us space, which is great. We've been doing repair cafes together for about six years and we're kind of overseen by the New River Valley Time Bank. So we're hoping that this will be an opportunity um, to draw on our volunteer base with the Time Bank and kind of solidify that as well, which is a little faltering after COVID. Mm -hmm. So we're really um, hitching ourselves to the wagon of the tool bank as something that's going to revitalize and offer, finally offer this service to our community. But we do, like we could really um, get a lot of value out of a group like this. And mm -hmm. I was really excited to see it happening. Yeah, the, the connections with the time banks, I think is one that and libraries of things could be uh, strengthened. Uh, one of the I'm I'm a big fan of time banks, and one of the one of the things that I really um, think is kind of the next step is that um, for those that are organizing them is that basically you have this group of people that have all shown up that have said I want to support others in my community, and uh, oftentimes people don't necessarily ask each other for support in the time bank networks. And it takes a little more facilitation for those that are running the time banks to be like, all right, let's see, how do we leverage? How do we give people the opportunities to serve in the way that they really want to? Um, so connecting things to like to tool libraries and other social infrastructures, uh, I think a very effective way to do that. Hi. Um, I'll introduce our, our library, if that's still all right. Yeah. Um, I put in a link. I'm from Banff, Alberta, Canada, um, and we have a library of things that we started out of our public library back in October 21. Um, we are kind of interestingly located in a national park, um, so we have high visitation, small population, and a lot of geographic constraints when it comes to people owning these sorts of items. Um, so it's been a really successful program. We have, um, you know, trying to keep it as low barriers possible. Um, so there's no fees or costs associated whatsoever. And um, we do it in partnership with our municipality for some of the funding, but it's really exciting to kind of continue this conversation because we wanted to do it for years before we were able to start. And now seeing what it brings to the community is, is a really special um, thing. And it just really extends 
that whole circular economy concept that libraries have had since time immemorial. <laughs> so uh, glad to have these conversations and looking forward to learning how we can participate. Thanks, Sarah. Hi, um, I'm Emma and I'm from the Share and Repair Network in Scotland. So we represent um, 83 different um, sharing libraries and repair projects um, emerging or existing. So we have um, 21 active um, sharing libraries, as I call it, across Scotland and um, 29 who are wanting to get started. So it's just been going for a year, but we've developed lots of um, resources and things like a mentor scheme. Uh, like a, a Slack forum and things like that. So okay. I'd be really keen to um, be involved mm -hmm. in any way possible to like yeah. share learning. So um, there's lots we can learn from you and hopefully yeah. I've got something we're very new, so maybe not very much, but um, yeah, it'd be really good to be able to share resources and information and things. That'd be great. That's uh, pretty amazing that you've only been running for that short period of time and you've got that many that are up and running and that many that are in development. Uh, so, so we haven't set up 21 no. sharing libraries. A lot of them already existed. I'd love to take credit for that, but I can't. Unfortunately. Uh, yeah, but networking them together is still uh, pulling that many groups together into it is uh, it takes a lot of work and care. So hats off for that. Um, anyone else want to share anything before we we close it out? All right. Well, thank you all so much for joining. Uh, as we mentioned, uh, we will be sending, we'll send out this, if you didn't copy the slides from the chat, we'll send out a link to everyone that registered for the session. Uh, that and the survey will also be posting both things to the Google listserv. Um, we're going to run the survey for a month um, and then we're going to start to analyze that data. So please do try and find some time in the next, you know, today, tomorrow, in this week. Um, and help us get a good kickstart on that. And um, and then we will be following up with uh, folks that one of the questions on the survey is, you know, if you would like to join the steering committee or, you know, to help help be a, um, participate more in this process. So please answer yes to that in that survey if you're interested and we'll be following up with people directly uh, from that forum. 